Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being in the top X percent of your class. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, why do some software engineering companies require you to fill in your bachelor's degree GPA and want to know if you were in the top X percent of your class when you have 20 years of professional experience? Well, I don't know. Um, I said, well, I don't really know anyone who does this. Maybe like, if, but I live in a different region of, from where this person probably lives. But um, the thing I suspect that they're looking for is if you are any good. And the thing that you think it makes you good is twenty years of experience, which I argue that's not the case. Uh, so at this point, I would say that among at least all the software developers I know and all the people I've ever worked with, I will probably, I will go as far as to say that I have done more interviews, uh, person, like face-to-face uh, -face interviews and done code tests and so forth for companies than the average person, quite a lot more at this point. I actually had this, my manager asked me what I was going to do when I retired and I said, well, I have a few options, either I can start an, my own IT company or something like that for fun, but another one that I can do is that I can offer my services as a technical consultant when hiring people, uh, because I've done quite a few of them. And what I can tell you guys is that having 20 years of experience doesn't mean that you're very good. It just means that you've been working for 20 years. And as I, I've made this analogy a few times now uh, on the channel, where if you tell me that you've been working out for 20 years, that doesn't tell like the the initial response you have. If I can see your like see your body or like see what you've been doing, right, uh, is that wow, that's really impressive. You must be really fit. But then after that, I m my question will be, well, yeah, you've been working out for 20 years, but does that mean that you've been walking, like in a leisurely stroll type of way or have you been you know, hitting the gym or what, what have you been doing because the time as we I like to say guys is the same thing with age if you're supposed to be an adult when you're 18 well most people will say that there's a bit of a difference in maturity between someone who's 18 and someone who is 50 but if you talk to a range of people you'll notice that after a little while it's sometimes hard to determine who is more mature uh, when you get up to like be middle-aged or something like that there might be a difference in quite a lot of areas and so age or years of professional experience or years of experience does not necessarily equate into that you're better at something uh, just because you've done it for longer it comes down to as I refer to it, the resistance like what's the quality of the thing that you've been doing and so when a company asks you for, it sounds to me at the very least that this is the sort of thing that they're trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out if you're actually talented. And there's a big difference between years of experience and talent. And so what I usually, uh, um, this is actually something that I tell my managers uh, when we talk about hiring new people and so forth, because uh, especially one of the managers that I've had, is uh, he is sometimes a little bit naive, I think, personally, uh, where, you know, he gives me, a, uh, puts me on charge of a project or something like that. And uh, he says, we need these results by then and that, uh, then and there, like, we should do this and that, and we need to do this by this time. And I go, you're probably not going to be able to do that. And he goes, why? And I say, very simply, because you have the wrong developers for the job. And he goes, okay, but then we have to staff people up. And I go, you're not going to be able to, in this specific scenario, you're not going to be able to staff people up just to move faster. Um, it's a saying that I borrow from one of my old co-workers, where he said that if you have, um, if, uh, if you have, uh, like, uh, if you have a pregnant woman, then she's going to give birth in nine months. Well, if you add more pregnant women, you're not gonna get three months. You're not gonna. They're not gonna have birth, give birth in three months just because you have more of them. It's just that you're gonna end up with more babies by the end of the th time period. It's the same thing with software because the quantity of code that you can ship at any given moment might go up by just having more people around. But the speed at, of their performance, how fast you will get one individual feature done, does not come down to, again, uh, like for, for us, like, uh, it's, this, it's the, 
or having runners, like if you have a hundred runners and they're all average, they're all going to arrive at basically the same time. But if you want someone who goes in and basically does it in a fraction of the time, you need someone who's really, really fast. And that's not something you can hire for. You can't just say on a CV, don't apply here unless you are super, super good because everybody's still going to apply. And so this is a way I think that they are trying to figure out are you one of the top performers in some fashion? Because the difficult part for some many companies is exactly this. They don't necessarily just want someone who just can do the job. In some cases, they just want the best of the best. And I can tell you that you can't really check for that. There's no way for you to accurately figure out how fast someone's going to be when they actually do the job. Even when I do interviews, I tell people all the time, like, I can tell if you know how to code, and I can tell if you're any good at it, if you have enough knowledge, experience, if you've been working for something, if you're an experienced software developer, yes or no, I can tell all of those things. But I cannot tell how fast you ship things, or how if you're a top-notch performer or something like that, when you're actually doing the work. I can tell if you're a top-notch in terms of knowledge or things like that, but that's the difference, right? As I said, you might have been working for years and years and years, but you might not actually be all that performant once it's time to do the job. And that's not something you can really check for. So this is a way, I suspect, that they're trying to figure that thing out. I don't think that that necessarily means much, because if you're, I mean, sure, I can agree that if somebody tells me that, yeah, I was in the top percent of my class, something, something like that, that's a very good measurement uh, overall to you know, how talented are, are you in average, because it's a performance thing rather than an, ex an experience thing, which can be very useful. It's just that I'm not sure. I mean, in my part of the world, this measurement wouldn't really work because nobody would know how what at what top percent they were in school or so forth and so forth. But I can I, I I don't really think it's a necessarily a good way of doing it, but I can understand, I think, the thing that they're trying to achieve, which is, as I said, something that is notoriously difficult to figure out. So what I want you to take away from this is that my guess is that some of these companies are looking for your GPA scores or your how high up in the class you are or so forth, uh, even though you have many years of experience, because experience doesn't necessarily mean that you're very talented. And if you're looking for top top level talent, it's actually very difficult to figure that out. As I said, it's easy to find someone who has a lot of experience or who has uh, seniority or something like that. Uh, because usually when, as I've said before, guys, just because you have experience and you're a senior doesn't necessarily mean that you're very good at coding. It's just a way to for us to tell how long you've been doing something and get a measurement roughly of how much uh, you've been doing. And so even if you've been working for 20 years, I've said that to a guy the uh, like a few uh, a while back who gave me some lip about uh, you know talking about dismissing people in a, in an interview because unfortunately I have to deal with some of those people where you know. I can't, I mean, I can't be held responsible for that my company needs someone who can do a certain job. And even if you've been working for 14, in this case, this guy had been working for years and years and years and go, I go, yeah. And he was upset because he didn't pass. And I go, yes, you've been doing this for years and years and years, but this is the test. You cannot pass this test, so I can't really do much more about that. And it doesn't matter if you've been doing it for 20 years, because it's ir that's irrelevant. It's your performance I'm after. I don't care how long you've been working. It's just that if you've been working for one year, you're probably not going to be good enough by a long shot to meet the requirements. But you've been working for 20 years, and you're still not good enough. And that's nobody's fault apart from your own, I'm sorry to say. Or maybe we have unreasonable expectations, but these are the expectations they have. And since more people are in than, you know, we, we've actually hired some people, maybe the problem isn't the hiring process. Well, it's not perfect, but maybe it is feasible to actually reach those sorts of experience levels. He was, of course, not interested in hearing that, but that's the reality, guys. Um, and some companies will have checks like this because what I said is that they're trying to most likely figure out if you're a top-notch uh, performer in terms of talent. And that is a very difficult thing. As I said, it's in comparison easy to find someone who is just a senior, but finding someone who is like, really, really fast with deliveries, really, really good with, you know, solving problems, etc., etc. That is, it's borderline impossible to do that effectively in an interview. 
and that's in many cases the reason why you have some very long drawn out hiring processes in some IT companies because they're not trying to just figure out if you know how to code they're trying to figure out just how good are you at that specific thing regardless of if you've been doing it for one year or 20 years have a great day